Welcome back to Pandem's playthroughs as we do the Steward's Fear in the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game as we do the first into the Against the Shadows cycle. Alright, let's get into some spicy scenes of the conspiracy. As foes mass from without, the Steward of Minas Tirith fears that there are enemies within. You have been asked to investigate the possibility of a conspiracy within the White City. Set up, create underworld deck, remove the roots of Mindulin from the encounter deck and set it aside. Shuffle the villain cards and take one out. Shuffle the plot cards and take one out. The underworld deck is all of the vill uh, villain cards or and enemy cards from the two optional encounter decks. Or two encounter decks. Go with it. Conspiracy, when revealed, search for the fourth star, make it the active location. And essentially, we need to quest through each location that's active to earn a point on the conspiracy. And when we do, we progress. Here's the four star Underworld X. X is the numbers in player a game. When it relieves location, we can draw one card. The Underworld pile, which you can see here at the top left next to my encounter pile, has all of the enemies from the other decks. Here on the fair, 8114 range, and we can pay for outlands of different spheres, which is nice. We've seen this one before, works really well. Supporting him, is Prince Imrahil 112324 with him ability to ready up when a character leaves play, which is handy in this cycle. Borrow me 111325, Gondor Warrior Noble, and he gets plus one attack for Gondor allies if he has a resource in his pool. Joining him are some help from the elves with Elrond 133234, and I may play allies from different spheres after a character is healed, increase that by one. Joined by one of the uh, Gondor princes, 11225 Faramir, ranged, gets one attack for each enemy in the staging area, and has a nice set of keywords. And Glorfindel's helping him out, 5331, and he must exhaust when I quest, or we raise our threat by one. So you can see here, we're set up and ready to go. This deck requires a bit from us uh, to prepare. We need the Outlands deck humming. The goal of that area is to get that running with all the plus bonuses whilst dealing with a number of enemies that, that will come out of the encounter Underworld deck. So without further ado, let's get started on this exciting scenario. All right, so now we've got our play area set up. Shuffle the decks and we'll get started. I also need to put the, uh, the location into the active location. Now, hoping here out of this deck, I want definitely I want Lord of Morthrond. That's what I'm wanting out of the Outlands deck. The ability to draw additional cards and get some card draw going is what good. Um, Elrond's deck, I definitely want Vilya or something like um, Light of Elanor. Something along these lines that allow me to uh, keep my threat manageable. There's a couple of things in this quest that come in stage two and stage three, the plot and the villain. There are plots and villains that do impact your ability to manage your threat and manage your card draw. And you do not want to run out of cards. So I'm consciously balancing things like Gandalf and that sort of thing. So there's Forge, Stargazer, not too bad. There's Vilya, right? Super, and Northern Tracker. Um, I put Northern Trackers into these decks and I'm not sure in hindsight that I should have. Um, because you only get to pass this by clearing active locations. You get the progress. Um, there's Morthrond there, which is awesome. Now the hand there and a Shulter Gondor. So like, it's pretty, pretty cheesy opening hand there. So I'll play that first, spend the two. Um, sneak attacks are handy for the Gandalfs. I wanted it for damage against a location, uh, against, against a enemy or the ability to draw cards. So you can see there for the three resources I play, Morthrond and Gondor. And put two resources back on to uh, Hill and the Fair, which is good. So drop that down. There we are there. And then I'll play Aethia Swordsman, which gives me the spirit of the early questing. Got to get the fourth star on other locations out of here quickly. Um, Valiant Sacrifices there. Got Unflas Herdman. Like, I think that's the right action here. Um... I was weighing up, do I not play, um, like getting the health out. So the, 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 there's a few bandits that engage you, do one damage to all um, allies, and that can be very damaging if I haven't got the Unflus Herdsman out. So I'll do whatever I can to avoid drawing out the particular bad 
villain or enemy that will uh, do one damage to everyone on engagement or two if it's not optionally engaged. So Vilja, I'm um, playing there. I'm leaving the one resource on Glorfindel because I prefer to have Glorfindel as my um, you get spirit resource going because Aaron can use his that to play spirit. Um, and I also forget, keep forgetting that Vilja lets me play spirit resources directly. So I keep trying to optimize for Glorfindel to have things. And I don't play Greetings of the Gladrum to do so. And it's, yeah, it's frustrating. Here I mine for an attachment with Master of the Forge. I pull out the Light of Eleanor. And this is why you use Elrond <laughs> for his resources first, right? Is that I want to ensure I can play Light of Eleanor here, which means I don't now exhaust the quest. Right, I'll raise my threat, sorry. I don't exhaust and I don't raise my threat. Which is nice. Managing threat's tricky. Like you're balancing out like um, any rapid burst increase of threat. Um, there's also a condition in this one. So that I've, I've played this deck six or seven times and I kept pulling up local trouble, which was this um, attachment that essentially makes your threat go up every single time you use an ability or exhaust or refresh. And that's been tricky. So what I managed to do was put some miners of the Iron Hill in the deck to draw to essentially get rid of that. Or it just made me pretty happy. All right, so I had a quest here for 11. And um, come back here. Okay, Market Square. Sick. That's a to play effects and cost to travel, but it's manageable. And Sewer, cool. So Underworld 1, resolve that first. It's a, a two, three threat, three quest point location with Underworld 1. And then we so put the card underneath that. And then when revealed, place the top card of the encounter deck. Of the, sorry, of the Underworld deck on the active location. So we quest here for five. And we managed to make it through here. Now, in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I need my board stay a bit more ready. But these three cards are going to come out. So we make one quest point. We flip over to side. Um, we don't flip over yet, actually, sorry. We need four points. So we need to clear four active locations. So clearing those four active locations uh, will get us to progress. So there's the Zealot Trader. Hey, you got a secret map and a Lossanuck bandit. And that Zealot Traitor is the one I'm being careful of. So when he engages, he does one damage to all allies. Now, I don't want my Outlands deck to be ravaged by this. Got low health. Unless I get Amphilus hurts them up. I have a lot of them. They're all going to have one health. So you'll be very careful of this. That's where I realize that that's something I need to manage throughout the game. Clearing the fourth star, we are able to draw a card each that draws up Peril, uh, Elmboy of Halagir and Daeron's Ruins. I engage Zealous Trader on the Elrond deck, to, and it means the Master of Forge will pop away. That's okay. Um, I should have read Emery Hill here because of that. However, I didn't just yet. I'm like, oh, hang on. So I'm engaging here. I'm going to have to take this attack undefended or defend with Boromir. So I'm going to defend with Boromir, and you still can see the... Uh, nail paint from my daughter painting my nails the other day um so bottom is going to defend this one at this stage it's a matter of just weathering this a little bit here um i've got to travel i get excited by this game sometimes i'm like oh what am i going to do with dealing with the enemies so i just travel it doesn't affect the gameplay um you'll find that whilst i try and be as tight as possible the rules if i do that sort of things unless i intentionally don't travel um yeah i just quickly fix that up so borrow me well emory hill is ready now so what I do here is I decide, you know what, I'm going to take this attack undefended. Undefended, so I have to remove one token uh, with the, the shadow effect here, is remove, if this attack is undefended, remove one point from the active quest. Now, that means I take the damage there. Now, I should be putting the damage on the Boromir or Imrahil here, which I haven't done yet, but I will do. There we go. When I re-record these things, I freak out sometimes that I've made a game-ending error early on. I've got to re-record the whole thing. So <laughs> uh, there we go. There, the exhausted thing. I kill him. So undefending there to take attack. I lost the quest point, which is frustrating. It sets me back a fair way. Um, and away we go. If I get that secret map up there, what it allows me to do? It allows me to place one progress token on the active location. 
which lets me help. Sorry, three progress loca- on the active location. There's another one that lets you place one actual uh, on the quest, which is cool. Uh, let's do a new round here. All right, let's go through this. So we drop in another Envoy of Palagi and Ranger Spikes for the there. My thought about the traps in this deck was partly to help with managing you know, damage on people or managing, um, uh, what is it? The threat in the area. So I can place it up there and this one turn give me a bit of a breather. Um, here I'm doing Imladra Stargazer for top five. And you can see there my, my top five's good, but they're all event driven cards. Now I'm gonna play a way up Burning Brand here versus Poison Stakes. Stakes are good. However, it doesn't stop the, them engaging. So if they're like, because given the, the brigands in this deck are all really low threat. The challenge with low threat is that they're going to come out anyway. They'll still attack and they'll defy and die at the end of the turn. So I can block the attack. Well, they're most likely going to die. However, it's something to think about. Like, what do I do with that regard? So I decide, you know what, I defend occasionally on Faramir. I like having him as a backup defender. Burning Brand means if they're hitting for three, they're only ever going to hit for three, right? Which is nice because that brand will stop things. Burning Brand is amazing card. If you're not used it or you're early in your play cycle, it's one of the cards that are just top shelf. All right. So I'm going to play Light of Valinor here in this hand, which means I don't have to worry about my threat going up now, which is nice. Um, and Daron's Ruins is a good way to, to flush through that deck that I used before. So I want to get those cards, like in Madras Stargazer and peering at the top deck for, to find something for Elrond to use with Vilya is key. What I want to do is flush that deck as fast as possible and rearrange it order. All right, so Shield of Gondor for extra resources. And what we'll play here is Unflas Herdsman, which does me draw a card. And also, this is where I do my dice shenanigans. So one extra health to those three. Draw up Knight of the Swan. Play Knight of the Swan. So if that's two off him there, beautiful. Now I don't have enough, unfortunately, for another Ithia Swordsman this turn, which is a shame. That's okay. And I decide to play, um, I'll just fix up my, my dice here. Right. So Ithia Swordsman, is where I add the spirit, which I hadn't done before. And I should be adding here one attack, which I do shortly. I play the Envoy of Palagir to give a resource to Hurl in the Fair, which lets me play the second one. So you can see there, those two resources from Boromir and Imrahil. I'm happy to take the one less attack on Gondor allies currently to get this out. So which means all of this is two in the O dice, be one red attack dice and then one a health dice, and then it'd be eventually a defense one that goes between the three. So let me just speed this up. Got a lot to questing here, the, the Outlands deck, which commits me for nice, but that false lead kills the entire round. And so therefore it kills the quest round, sorry, the quest phase, and therefore it ends immediately, no threats placed on it. Then I play defend with burning, defend with burning brand with Faramir against um, that particular uh, enemy, the, the brigand and then we defend it take one damage and then we're attacking and killing which is nice a bit of uh, ranged and uh there so i fix up the dice and ready up there are a few times where i speed this video up for the dice <laughs> i'm not sure a good way to play an outlands deck with counters in person dragon cards nice to click click but yeah there's a palagir ship captain and some more traps which gives me a bit of control here Traps are nice. As a few times I use them to my advantage, but maybe not enough. I think it really benefits from the particular trap heroes and even Alep cards, I believe, change the ruling. Because what happens with the traps is that the first enemy will trigger all traps. And sometimes you, so you can't lay out multiple traps in a deck unless you've got a big enemy coming out. You need two poisons on one. It's not going not to do the damage there, right? Um, four longs a nice play here. So four long lets me ready him up each phase now i remember this a couple of times i forget but every phase so he can quest with him he readies up you can defend with him um you know and okay he's ready up and so you can do you can do things with him many times which is nice right um so there's a few things 
uh, that is nice about four long. I also now have the all four colors out. The quad is out, right? Which is great. That's how you can play them, and it's nice. I'm definitely still anxious that I haven't got additional health. I sure four health and four long is nice, but if I get the Anphalus her um Anphalus herdsman, the Warrior of Lossenach gives you plus one defense, right? It gets a couple of those out, then it runs all of a sudden got more defense, more health, right? So it's very nice to start buffing these up. It becomes quite nice. <laughs> it's a cool deck. It is susceptible to encounters that destroy card draw and hurt you there. All right, Envoy Pelagir comes out. I'll get a resource here, which is great. I've got the plus one here for the Gondor characters. Sorry, Gondor allies because of Boromir. And then I, you know, she comes out. I pay the two to spend on her and then place that one back on Boromir, which is super. Um, Enlarger Stargazer, top deck. Let's have a look at it. Cool, another Stargazer. I'm going to pull a Stargazer here. To have two, I think. Uh, it's great to have the tester wheels there, but you have to play like I can reorder my deck in a certain way. So the top five can be reordered. It's not a matter of just this is what I have. So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to draw up next? So if I put Imladris there and then use Vilya, I can play Stargazer for free. And then next card draw, I'll get a tester wheel, right? Or Darren's Rune. So you can, I can draw it through here. So I draw these two cards. And then if there's something in my hand that I don't want, it's great. Now, I didn't think, I, I recall I'm tired. I think I've said this before. And I should have probably played Elrond first, then done it. But hey, I able to get rid of the Master of the Forge here, which is, I don't need him. I've got Vilya. It's used to mine the deck for Vilya um, or other things like Light of Elnor or Burning Brand. And I have them all. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So... Let's see, there's a, I get a little bit anxious because I've played so many games of this scenario and I've lost through losing control, the deck location locked or those various things. So I play Ranger Sparks here. This means that I can I make optional, I don't have to, I can skip engagement checks with a particular person in the traps and I get negative two to the contributions with threat, which is nice. So, Let's do this. Let's see what happens here. Now, having the Outlands engine online already, the two Ethia Swordsmen are questing for six. Two extra from the Herdsmen, Knights, and Four Long, right? Throwing out throwing Glorfindor for free. And I'm getting very, very quickly, I'm getting into a scenario where I can quest reliably without exhausting my heroes. If I need to push harder, sure, commit Alrond or a Faramir, right? But this is quite nice here. So Again, so we're questing here for three against three in the staging area of the marketplace. And that becomes quite high all of a sudden, as I said previously. So we're looking to make three progress against our 14, but three here, so we need 11 to come in the area. There goes the dissident, which means his three threat becomes one threat and he's optionally engaged, which is super. That's nice. And then another one, okay. <laughs> So these are the only brigands in the deck. The rest is in the underworld deck. Okay, so we pass the sewers. I get my one point back on uh, the conspiracy. And we reveal this card. And it's, oh, sick, a scrap of history. So i got two things that I need to exhaust my heroes for in the staging area. So you your action to exhaust it, a hero, or you attach it and then do it. Now, the secret map is something I can put onto a hero. And exhaust a later date. I should have done this earlier as opposed to doing it the same turn. But you can play it nicely if you want to wait later or do it earlier to progress the stages. Depending on how your board state is. So two enemies here. So it's four, we make the progress there. I travel to Market Square by spending the resources. So Boromir uh, loses the plus one on the envoys of Pelagir. I draw him out because I want to get rid of him. Let's clear it out, right? I can handle it this turn. So but Faramir against the Underworld Dissident, Burning Brand, means I'm only going to be hit for two, which is great. Imrahil's going to take this one here and a Shadow card there. Let's do it. And oh, Local Trouble gone. That's good. Local Trouble is the bane of my existence. I had two of them in one match. And yeah, chaos. All right. Burning Brand on this one gets rid of it. I think you can play Burning Brand. 
once you've revealed the shadow card, I don't think you need to play it first. Yeah, exhaust a burning brand to cancel a shadow effect just triggered during attack that the attached character was defending. So yes, you can play it after you flipped it. So um, I know that I have to flip it usually because most of these surge each time, which is uh, one of those things you got to get used to. All right, clear, clear, we're going to attack here. This is where I'm trying to weigh up what I can attack with. Now, given that I defended with that there, Herolon doesn't have enough attack to her. Oh, I, I'm thinking through, oh, why can't I attack it? And I forget that Herlon doesn't have enough attack. I think, oh, he hasn't got enough. I'm like, actually, no, he does. He's got two. So five from Boromir and Herlon the Fair into the Dissident on the left-hand side. And then I'm just weighing up how I want to do it. So the idea for me here is I want to keep my heroes um, active so I can claim both quest items. And what I realize here is I need to use a hero on either side to make this happen. Well, actually, I don't. Technically, I could use Envoy. Well, yeah, I do. Envoy, Palagir, and Bor and Hurl on the Fair can kill it. At least borrow me to get one. Or, but Alrond and Glorfindel both need to attack because it's four. So they do that, right? It gets rid of it there. That's fine. And then I exhaust those two. And the best I can do here is having the Envoy of Palagir and Hurl on the Fair or whomever, a Boromir, attack and kill the Dissident. Yeah, super. And now I can grab one. Now, I'm playing it where I want to increase play the Scrubber History, which lets me uh, exhaust that to the victory display and increase my counter on the quest. The other one will let you add three points to the active location. So they've got different little behaviors, which is nice. So, all right, we're going to clean up and go again. Yeah, Scrubber History is nice. One resource token to the current quest, which is good. So... Let's see what we've got here. We've got a nice board state. I find that the Outlands deck will be pretty performant, this quest. All right, let's test a wheel, and we've got the uh, Valiant Sacrifice. I've got to remember to play Valiant Sacrifice. I always forget to, and I'm always in a good spot to play it, right? Anyway, that's okay. Stargazer, top five. One, two, three, four, five. Darren's runes would have helped me shuffle through what's there. So, oh, Gandalf, Gleowen, Forge. There we go. So this is where Elrond's silly because i can put beyond gandalf tree beard expensive things on top of the deck flip them out and away they go so the idea here is that i could come out and play him at, and i can play alrond oh, sorry vilia at any round right so i could play him in the at, at a different phase and that's really handy if i was out of phase i need additional um you know i've got to draw too many allies or that sort of thing now i always don't keep my powder dry <laughs> i always get too excited however here's an example so i'm going to use it to draw cards right and drawing cards is good because that means then that i can uh, uh have a bit more control in my hand i am then also you're going to use glearwin to allow the outlands deck to draw a card right happy days so you've got a bit of good board state here um you gotta move that across it's meant to be big and shiny for a reason but i forget um now White Tower Watchman, excuse me as I yawn in this one here, as I re-record, <laughs> is the White Tower Watchman is one of those cards that is awesome. The idea of White Tower Watchman is I put the sword of Morthrond onto it. Now, I don't see one for ages, but the sword, as I shuffle my deck and look for it now, is a, a sword of Morthrond. There's only one in the deck, right? It attached to a Gondor ally gains the Outlands trait. So you can see here, if I go in the Outlands trait, also I get two extra spirit, one health, one attack, right? And then very, very quickly, I start becoming quite, he becomes a quite a, a big character, right? They also can take undefended damage. So if you're boosting their health by three from the Amphalos Herdsman, undefended attack of six, no worries, right? It becomes really, really powerful. And it's all for the cost of one, uh, a sword of one cost leadership. So that's the goal around that one there. 
but just bulking up my uh, bulk up protecting the Outlands deck is the goal of Elrond and his crew. Now if there is master of the um, master of healing. Um, it's, his name's not Master of Healing, that's for sure. Um, and I see them go past in this deck. It is, and there's even an Asphaloth in this deck and other things there to help with the control. That's why I should have. That's why I did over Northern Tracker. Or I should have removed the Northern Tracker. Asphaloth is in there, but there is um, Warden of uh, Healing, and that's there. So Lost in the City sucks here. Lost in the City means each player must draw a a, uh, a can deck or a card has the city word on it and shuffle the deck. So let's go through and do that now because that's a pain. This is one of those ones where I just get sad. Bad. Like we can pick the storehouses, which is nice. It lets me put the uh, counter, counter cards under there. Look, it could be worse, right? It just boosts that thread up and they're, they're the lowest ones. They're worth two. So that works there. And there is local trouble. That goes on to Elrond. He's the highest threat character in game. And every time he breathes, he has to increase his threat. Now, <laughs> This is what Miner of the Iron Hills is for in this deck. Now I need to find him. Card draw is paramount for this deck. Also, have to be careful of one of the plots that burns the city down, and each turn you lose one more card. So I've got to balance this one out, and then it becomes a quite a race. A bit of theme on this one. So we are trying to hunt down the scheme still, what's going on. We make progress there by clearing it out, though, still. We're questing hard. Like, we're lucky in some respects, 2-2-2, two, 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 and then we're getting some treacheries. Like, it's manageable. Right. Now, let's see what we can do here. We're going to uh, exhaust Hurl on the Fair to trigger this one here and add three progress tokens to active location. So we're in the travel phase here, and I use the action window to do place that. And it brings out a traitor. That's all right. So let's trade it. Now, I have one health on Stargazers, two and one on Gan two and four on Gandalf and Gleowen. And then there's two health on the Outland deck, but I am concerned about getting a two or three traders and not being able to bring everything across. So there's a grand design. A, you have uncovered crucial information about the dissident plot and even gleaned hints of the conspirator's secretive leader. Clues have led you to a cavern deep in the heart of Mount Mindulin. As you descend into the ancient rock, you begin to suspect clues that led you here may have been misleading. That you have may have been lured away from the city streets for a purpose. Reveal the set-aside plot and add it to the staging area. 2B, make the routes of Mindul in the active location, returning any others to the staging area. After location, leave play, add a request on the token. We need four to pass. Right. So let's reveal... Let's reveal the card here, the plot, the plot here, <laughs> up in flames. At the end of the round, place one resource token here um, and discard the top X card to place decks. X is the number of resources on this card. Now I put a dead center so I don't forget. Now we have to balance milling our deck, searching through it and pulling cards up. Because if we run out of cards on any player, we lose. So. Someone's thrown a, thrown a torch down, burning a house, burning a pub, burning something. There are fires in Lower Gondor. We need to find what's going on. We've been brought away, though, into the caves, following the clues, and we're in trouble. So I actually engage the Zealous Traitor here, and that allows me to deal with the one damage. I took that on the chin, decided that I'm going to pump the Outland deck up at the cost of ability to control my deck. So I probably won't see another Stargazer. Um, and so defending against um, Faramir with his um, brand, but don't need and take the damage there. Don't need to use the brand in this case. This is great. Now I can attack here only with Glorfindel, unfortunately. So I only can do one damage to this particular one. Um, it's not got nothing to boost it, nothing to do with any control with it. And that's fine. Sometimes that happens where you just don't have enough in the tank. The goal for me here is to really work on ensuring I have a clean board state um, in terms of what's engaged with me because those underworld cards all of a sudden starts adding two, three, four cards underneath them gets tricky, right? So anyway, here we go. Let's go again. Go another round. Let's see where we end up. All right, let's play another round. Let's go again. Speed this up and we'll draw a 
draw up the Palagar ship captain and another set of traps. Now, adjust the threat. We're looking okay. See in the 30s. But we've got resources there. Do the Strider Gondor. And there's the ship captain and the traps. Now, second player token moves, or first player token moves to second player. And now we're going to start losing cards really quickly, right? Um, we're going to be careful. We're going to lose two in this turn, so be careful what we draw up. This hand is getting silly. Look at all the traps. Look at all the shadow cancellation. Even the Ren reveal cancellation. So it's paramount that I leave some resources on Elrond and Glorfindel, and not spend it all too much, right? So uh, I tap Glorf. Glorf. I play Elrond here blindly, and playing Vilya blindly. I managed to pull up Heldia of Lorien, which is a fluke. One of the most expensive cards in my deck. Outside of Gandalf, which is quite nice. Um, I don't. I realise that Glearwin is exhausted still. Um, he shouldn't be. I should use him to draw a card up. Um, I just adjust my dice here. Now that I have um, a resource in in Boromir's Bull. And all right, so I'm just playing what I want to play. Got a few sneak attacks there. The ship captain is going to go down again, just to help pad out what I've got there. So having one, 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 one across the attack and the spirit stat line for those characters is nice. Then I have two attack each. So if I need to do in a pinch, when the villain comes out, we know a villain will come out. I have something to attack hard as well. And I've quested the same turn with my outlands. The Gondor characters there are either chump blocking or they're managing to deal with um, a bit of damage or some, uh, some enemies there. All right, so I realize that the roots of Mindulin needs a Underworld card on it, and that's fine. Which I had, it doesn't change the game state because I already drew out the other ones before. Right, so we're going to commit to questing across the Outlands characters and Glorfindel. That gives us a regular 16, 17 odd uh, questing progression, which even if the deck turns out big things, it's something like most we can do is 10. So we should be able to make progress each time. So City Streets here surge, and we surge into the stab in the back one. And then we, and then the second card is return brigands to the encounter area. Okay, so, so I have two cards here. I'm going to roll a d6. One to three is Heldy and Gleowin's uh, four to six. So Gleowin attacks and then is discarded. He attacks for nothing, so he does no damage. And discarded. And then here is uh, the card I was supposed to draw up from Gleowin. Which I didn't do beforehand, even though I was exhausted. So I would have done that at the start. Um, again, it doesn't affect gameplay because I don't, I don't mean to get Anatar out. Now the brigand goes back to the staging area. And he's done, and it happens before you calculate your threat. So so two, four, six in the staging area against 16. I pass this one here, even with the plus two quest points and the other, other ones. No, we're fine. We're going all right here. So that comes a pickpocket. Pickpocket is one resource from all heroes and one random card from your hand when you engage him. He's a 28 threat, 3102 uh, enemy. So they don't hit hard, they just will come out always. So the low threat here, you can't like play like the cave troll where you gotta wait till 40 or you know, 35, 36. It's coming out, right? All the dragons that are in later, later, later cycles. All right, so we travel to the storehouse which I should have traveled to the city streets here, and I rectify this one later. I realize next turn. So it doesn't change the game outcome because I quest for the exact same amount, and I have the same quest points, the same things. I should have quested to city streets. Storehouse and city streets are identical. So I'm still chucking this up as a, a order of operations mistake. However, it's still a valid pass. So I think I end up swapping them over and keeping their, uh, in their cards underneath. I engage your pickpocket, remove a card from random, remove resources. We're still good. We're pretty we're pretty lush over this left side. Draw the shadow card here for the trader. Draw the shadow card for the pickpocket. Again, the trader's coming out and doing damage to allies. I'm protecting my Outlands characters at all costs. You can imagine if you lost Anflas Herdsman, then lost everything. 
Uh, if it was undefended, we lose one from the quest, but that wasn't undefended. Haldir was defending it. Haldir is defending against three, so he has two damage on him now out of three. So Haldir's not bad. Pickpocket against Imrahil. Imrahil takes a lot for a hero. He's pretty good, though. So it's plus two against there, so it's three damage in total. So one, got, one slips through against the two defense, which is not too bad. Like the, what we're seeing here is... Um, uh, what happens to that deck? They just come out and jab, 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 which is very thematic of a knife, a knife in the back, right? Um, cool. So we're going to attack the Zealous Trader here with Glorfindel and uh, Faramir and remove him, which is nice. It's five damage into four. So the counter's on two. We now discard two cards. I don't want to look at them because it makes me sad when you have to discard bulk cards, but they go away and see, it. bang, sneak attack, and they... Uh, Something else, I put it into the encounter discard pile. That I'll eventually move back into the play discard pile, surely. But part of me wonders what's going on. Like, what am I doing? All right. So, <laughs> that's in the call there. Turn finishes, tidy up a bit. And you can see I'm speeding it up there. So, but now the big one is we are discarding two cards. You know, previously from that there in flames. So, you can see there that <laughs> it starts to build up quickly of how. So I'm tempted to play Sneaker Cut Attack Gandalf here, but I'm in an ring over this. I do think the Hunter of Lamadon is the right choice. So playing that there will allow me to check the top of a card in my hand to see if it's... Um, to see if it is an Outlands card, and if that is an Outlands card, that card comes to my hand. However, it will um, most likely uh, end up being not an Outlands card, because I've got a fair swack of them out already. Let's tidy up this play area, speed through it. So, of course, commit to the quest. Uh, and you can see here the Outlands team are doing what I need them to do. And this is where I realise, oh, hang on. I shouldn't have had a, a uh, storehouse in their play area. So this one surges here. I need to reveal it's, uh, a card, and if it's a clue, discard it. Unfortunately, it was a clue. One of the nicer ones being the prisoner, and the prisoner would have yielded us a little bit extra of things, but that's okay. Like the prisoner, look, it could have been all right for us, but we didn't get it. That's okay. It just would have sped up a cycle. We commit, commit nicely here. Um, a knife in the back always hurts, but I roll, I count how many are here, and I see that there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I roll a number on Google randomness, and it gives me a number 11, which is nice. And so I think of the 11th ally, which is this one here, working from left to right, which I think is a fair way of doing it. Um, if it's the dice, like D3, D4, D6, D12, I try and do it that way. Um. All right, I could use a d20 then actually, and just do roll until I get something between one and 11. Anyway, that's been done. Lost the Palagia ship captain, did damage to Imra Hill. Sneaky. Um, sorry, to Hill on the fair. Um, and this is where I was like, cool, do that there. My god, hang on, no, I shouldn't have played this city streets. I'm having a moment here. And I'm like, oh, look, I played it wrong. And so I realized there's things in my, in my encounter, in my wrong deck. And I like having a tidy play area. So that comes out. And so if I had played City Streets, I would not have had the, um, what's it called? Underworld card with me here. But in the outcome of the game, I take care of this one here on this turn. It would have had City Streets there and the same threat cost location still sitting in the play area. So upon review, and you can watch this yourself, it doesn't impact the outcome of the game, which is nice. Um, all right. So let's do that there. We spend our cost here. We play uh, our card here, the Gandalf with sneak attack in the travel phase to delete that enemy from the play area. We'll have done this next turn anyway. And then I travel to a location. I spend the resource on each one. So Gandalf is in play for that phase and leaves. So he comes in, does his full damage and leaves. So no extra 
anything from him, and that's okay. All right, let's go through here. We can see here that now I've traveled to Market Square by spinning a resource for each player. I cleared one of the locations, which gave me uh, two out of three, so we're almost there. Two more against this one here. But each round, up in flames burns, right? And it's getting harder and harder. Then the cards go three. Very quickly, I'm bumping up my Alron threat each turn. It's going up because of the treachery. It's not good, right? So let's clean this one up and we we'll go again. So you can see an Outlands deck is fun to play. There's a lot of upkeep, however, for this. All right, draw my cards. Vision leader, uh, was it visionary leadership on my other deck there? I should get, I'll get a bit better as feedback to myself and recording to hold the cards that I get upright. I usually show them off in front of the camera, but I've drawn it from the wrong, put them on the wrong side here. So I got the visionary leadership, which is not bad, which gives every Gondor character plus one spirit. However, I'm just gonna play Gandalf outright here. And what's nice here is I'm going to designate my own deck here as card draw. Now, this is a 52 card deck for memory, of which I've drawn up 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 15 odd cards, plus I have another 3 or 4 in, sorry, there's about 8 in the, in the, in the uh, discard pile, which means I've got about 25 left. So it should be okay, given a few more rounds of Up in Flames. So... Let's play this out nicely here. Let's commit these outlands to the quest. So we're going to quest quite high again. So three, six on with Fallon and the Hunter questing with the, with the Nice of the Swan and Amphalas Herdsman. You can see very quickly how these decks are powerful because four and so ten straight up with these two plus Clawfindle makes it 13. Very quickly you can see adding in you know, Gandalf even becomes a lot higher, 14 plus 17, like 19. It very quickly, I've even got even a Theist Oarsman going, and like, there's three or four characters there that can quest for three, which is pretty great. Um, all right, so I'm going to, oh, so I use a Yoloid, oh no, Yoloid, on the, on the Vilya attachment to drop the next thing, and I found that I had a Mine of the Iron Hills, and that gets rid of condition attachments in play. Which is nice because that gets rid of the local trouble, the thing that increases my threat every round. So it's nice. With Elrond, if you play something from the top of your deck and you don't want it, you put it on the bottom of your, of your deck, right? So it's nice. Um, cool. Um, so it's always good playing it. Unexpected Courage. There's a couple of them in the deck on him to cover that there. The Underworld Bur Dissident goes into the trap, so he's negative. It has two damage into play, so I just need to tank him this turn and he'll die, which is nice. Uh, I've got to test a will here, and that comes in handy next round, which is good. Um, I use test a will there. Actually, that's the test a will I use, sorry, to cancel that one there, which is nice. I use test a will later as well, which is nice to cancel things. Um, so this is where I realize, okay, the city street should have gone in, not the market square. Again, this doesn't change the outcome of the game. You can see here, even if an Outland character came out right now, from underworld character from the deck they're just bandits this board space commands presence i've got this one here so you can see here i would have enough to deal two or three enemies at once including blocking so i'm okay with that faux pas in the previous round of not playing the city streets correctly um for those who are new to following this game or new to this game in general you will find there are scenarios where you will Make mistakes, minor things. These aren't game ending ones. Any game ending <laughs> mistakes, you will not send a recording because I've already recorded it. I'm not going to let game end this through. Um, all right, so we Ren revealed here. It's a shadow card. It's not a shadow card. It's fantastic. So we block that nicely. Um, and then he subsequently dies that turn. So we just blocked that one and defended it. All right, speed it up a bit here because we want to tidy up. All right, so we we'll go again. Discard through Gandalf, discard the four cards now. So four, bang, gone. Four, done. In the respective discard piles, farewell. And farewell. I don't even want to look at the cards because it's sad. There's a loss of defender. However, with my Outlands deck, I have the ability to spend X where X is the value of Outlands in your discard pile, which lets me bring them back. You can see here you got two loss at Warriors of Loss of Neck, which is exactly what I'm after here. So I'm playing them and the Amphalus Herdsman, which means now I have a flurry of dice to go and fix. So 
Red for health, red for attack, green for defense, yellow for spirit. Now I'll go through and do this. This is where I think I need to play the Tetris music. All right, to get a fair idea of what we're going on here, this is sped up three and a half times. So you can see here, this is 15, 20 seconds of me being silly. However, you can see there's a lot of upkeep. All right, so these dice are handy. So draw a sewers, in it goes. It's a last card, and then the card gets put under there. And we will shuffle the encounter deck. The encounter deck is fully charged. There's one more card in my uh, underworld deck. So we will romp through this stage. You can see here already, there is the ability to quest is quite high on all of these cards here. I'm questing for a substantial amount. Sorry, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 20, like 21 with Gelfandel. So it's pretty high. Um, I have a balance there. And this is where these outlay decks become powerful. Stuart's Fear is one of the best packs in the game. Um, so I drop my villain, drop my phase, I pass that zone. Now 3A, the confrontation. The confrontation, you have unmasked the conspiracy and its champion is upon you. Rules of treachery are in motion and only a heroic effort can stop the cabal's plan in time. When revealed, put out the set aside villain. Number 3B, 15 points. When revealed, shuffle the underworld deck into the encounter deck. The car, players can't defeat this while the villain is in play. If this stage is defeated, the players have won the game. And our wonderful villain is the daughter of Berethil. 103535 cannot opt be optionally engaged. And when the daughter attacks, she returns to the staging area unless you increase your threat cost by four. Now I've got about eight threat costs between everyone here. We're seeing 37 and, and 40, so we're fine here. The goal here is given the first players my left hand and outlines deck is to quest through this quite hard and engage them. So I'm leaving things in the staging area because that doesn't matter to me right now. Or oh, this is the end of the turn, sorry. We'll go through this turn again. We optionally engage them, so we've quit, done that there. We're going to remove them from the game here. So what we want to do is so travel to the location, you know, I wipe traveling, I don't need to travel because like next turn I can quest for this, right? But it doesn't matter if I quest or not quest, see the point value, right? If it's sewers are in or sewers are out, they're adding three. So that doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll travel there. And then I allow the engagement to not option engage, it just happens. So out comes the daughter and the pickpocket to my left hand side. I'll defend this here with my characters accordingly. So what we'll do here. Is I'll use the Pelagi and the Gondor um, Envoy Pelagi and the Pelagi Ship Captain to defend things here. Losing them is a 1 1 character, even with some um, coins that should be on plus one attack, is uh, not going to make a difference. So we defend that there. I ready up for long too, because for long new phase gets it ready up because there's four colored outland allies in play. So you can see here. Very, very close. So we draw up, return an attacking enemy to the staging area. I'm like, oh no, she's going to return. What am I going to play? Here it comes from the other hand. And so shadow effect with hasty stroke. A hasty stroke. <laughs> Able to then remove that shadow card, which means she stays. I bump up the threat by four to 41 and 44 respectively. I think it's only that individual player she's engaged with though as well, which is even better. So, yeah, the person she's engaged with must raise. Yeah, cool. So it's only that one. And... All right, so there we go there. We can see that that shadow card whiff there. Out goes the Gondoran Spear. Um, sorry, the Envoy of Palagir. And what we can see here is this final push now. So I'm going to push pretty hard here and attack back. So I need to do, I do 10 damage here. So three, six, uh, nine for my three heroes against Daughter of Berethil, which is more than enough, and then the extras from the Knight of the Swan and Forlong, remove that there. I should have done that Shadow card on the other side first. I get a little bit one. I'm so used to playing one-handed. Before this series, I played one-handed almost exclusively. 
Um, so we can see here the shadow card goes off against Faramir. Faramir burning brands the shadow card. If it was a, if it was a shadow card, it wasn't. It was knife in the back. So it's two damage. That's fine. Here we go. There. This is the final round. Now I'll discard five cards from the hands here, but that's fine. They, they kill it there. Cool. All right. So let's just tidy this one up. Now all we need to do is quest for fifteen against the main quest. That's a total of 18, 21. So I need to do 21 with what's currently on the board. So I need to hit something very high. Now I'm being very silly here and going all in. Now I should have shuffled those last two underworld cards into the deck. It doesn't make a change in outcome. If there was people in play, an outcome of having to quest for them, I have additional test of wills in hand. I have additional hasty strokes in my player hand. I have enough throughput here. So questing for almost uh, 40. I think I could do 41 if I did everything. I'm not putting tokens down. So I draw market square and I draw a local trouble. Therefore it's 40. It's 40 versus three, six, nine. Uh, 24 so I beat it by 16 plus that is the scenario done I've beaten the stage the stewards fear is real there is something going on and someone's after us so find out next week with Pandem's playthrough of what is going on in Gondor what is going down as we head into the Druidan forest to find out more